Sorry. So, <laughs> good to be here. Um, very nice. I heard a lot of techno te uh, technical stories this morning. Uh, I have a technical background myself. Uh, 1993, I wrote a thesis on artificial intelligence, and since then, I didn't work anymore in this area. <laughs> Actually, I worked in IT industry for about 10 years. Uh, always combined with marketing, with branding, and especially in, in the branding area, I became interested again in neural networks and how you can, and, and psychology and how things work in our brains. And wrote a book in 2005 about the future of media, marketing, and brands, how things will evolve in the future. And uh, the book, uh, the book was nominated for the British Marketing Literature Awards, so I was very, I was very pleased with that. Um, but actually predicted that, that brands would change fundamentally and that we would have a kind of, what I, uh, what I said, a kind of brand and it was characters representing brands that would be very, very important in the next 10 years. So I started uh, somewhere in 2005, 2006, uh, started to have a, just a, a few examples of chatbots in Holland. And the page become, soon became very popular in Holland. It was actually the most popular, um, most popular uh, page on my website. So I thought, later on I thought this should be just a page on my on my personal website. It should be a page on itself. So that's where chatbots got on started. And uh, last year I was in Australia, and I was really thinking about how to how to what would be the would be the next step. And as a result of the economic climate, I saw a lot of new chatbots coming on, uh, especially companies applying using uh, chatbots for the call centers, reducing their costs, and of course. Wow, it's taking off. It's it's getting there. We are this is this chatbots will have a huge future. Do we agree on that? Do we agree on that? Chatbots will have a huge future. So this is might be one of the first conferences, one of the first co serious conferences in this area. And next year it will be bigger. And a few years from now it will be bigger and bigger. And we will have one of the first conferences. <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> So Richard asked me, could you please give me an overview of the industry, of the business of chatbots? And I thought that, that's, that, that would be a difficult job. Um, because I think, I personally think, the status of this industry, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. It's unbelievable, unorganized. When you are about to, to develop something for your clients and you have to explain in what industry you're working, what, what, what industry are we working actually? Are we working in, in the industry of, oh, no, we're, missing, we're missing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of words, but I've defined, i found 60 different synonyms of the word chatbot. <laughs> 60 different. And it's not, I didn't make up one myself. I, I've just found them, companies, people using these synonyms. When you're looking at them, you can easily recombine and, uh, and make new synonyms. And it's, 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 that's, that's really, really a difficult thing, because when you explain something, hey, I'm, I'm building language bots, or I'm building uh, E-reps, or V-reps, or I'm building virtual humans, you say to the client, the client goes to Google, types something, and get a total um, not representative image of the business. When you type chatbots, for example, you can only show this. When you type, oh, when you type, sorry, when you type virtual agent, and this is the term which tends to be used in some countries for business, for 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 chatbots applied in customer centers. The term virtual agent you have a total different thing. There's no overlap, no overlap at all. And for virtual agents, it's even worse because it also means a real estate agent. Um, uh, from on the distance. It also means a someone working in a call center but not uh, physically in, in a call center but on a distance. Also a virtual agent and on top there's also a company which is called virtual agent. We're all trying to be there. Conversational agent again we have another list. And I can continue the story and it's 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 it's, it's, it's terrible and for clients it's even worse. How can we explain what business we are in without even defining what our business is? So, what Chatbots the Lord likes to do is to advance this industry, helps this industry forward, helps each individual uh, one of you to, to bring knowledge, to bring back people, bring businesses and academics and developers together and to learn from each other and bring it a step 
I had. I had a movie to illustrate how clients think. just human beings. They're just human beings. You tell them something, explain them something, you give them a term, you call it a virtual agent or a chatterbot, and they go to Google, type the term, try it another time, and I think about that. And I don't want to search anymore. So we should make it more easy for clients in order to build a business, to build an industry. We should do, do more of it. So that's where I started. Start with a definition. And According to me, my definition should begin in communication. Communication between people. That's actually where it should start. And we have a simple model for that. A very extremely simple model for that. We have, this model has been around since actually the first preachers on earth existed. Because this is not about text. This is about, this is about feedback. This is about normal, normal things you do Normal things you do, like this, we didn't spoke any word. It's just feedback, it's just how you raise me with it. So the two, two your reactions, the expected reactions of other people. And you can, you can talk about this stuff, I can point you to this guy, and we can talk about this guy. But this guy can also be in a sentence totally wrong from the context. So the visual context is also extremely important. So according to me, this should all be in this model, but the media unfortunately has removed the feedback mechanism. And it already started uh, in, the early, in the early days, 25,000 years ago, where we have caves and where we have uh, drawings in the caves. That's where the stories of people get got disconnected. Of, of, uh, got disconnected. Stories and people got disconnected. So that's technology. Actually, that's the first technology to bring your story to many people without really being there. In Mesopotamia, 2,500 years ago, we had the early writings. We had our first printing machines. We had radio. We had magazines, radio, television, all kinds of television, more television, more television. More television, and this is the status today. People get 3,000 commercial messages a day. 3,000 commercial messages a day. Via TV, via Facebook, via radio, via newspapers. Just walking on the street, they get 3,000 messages a day and all screaming for attention. And I believe this won't be, won't be, it will really change in the future. It will really change in the future, it will all collapse. And I think we will, have, we will go back to this model where we automate, because we have automated the sending of messages. That's what brands and companies and organizations tend to do. They automate, the send, they, they have appointed a single person in the company called the marketing communications director or the marketing director they are responsible for bringing the message across to as many people as possible, but the process itself, the sending itself, is automated. The marketer directly goes home, goes to bed, and then in the night all the advertising programs run on television and everywhere. Automated sending. And what we are doing here is the automation of listening. We are automating this process. This process. And you can say we can start with brands, we can also start with, and it will even be better this automation, because normally when you have a dialogue with, with someone, um, you remember parts of the dialogue, and a half year later, um, you remember a few things from the dialogue, and two years later, maybe you remember something from the dialogue. But our conversational systems we are building, our chatbot we are building, will be much, much more intelligent than human beings can be. And this model will not start with brands, it will start with consumers. Consumers are in the kitchen, for example, having a need. They have frozen bread and they want, that's not very convenient, I would like to have something. And that's where the, where the need starts, that's where companies can go in. Because they, they're wondering, could, 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 wouldn't be a solution available? And then they ask a company, or a series of companies, and that's where product development starts. It's a total different way of thinking. It's really, the, the, really the, changes the whole world. 